Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Pocket of Preschool and today is the day I'm showing you one of the new science units. I am showing you the, if you can see in the back, it's kind of a little clue, the pet fish science unit. And I know you're thinking pet fish for a science unit, but this science unit teaches um, what living things want and what they need. Um, it also teaches about the parts of a fish and um, about ocean, um, ocean animals and what a fish is. So I'm gonna walk around, show you the um, show you the fish, pet fish <laughs> science unit in action. And before I do that, I want you to tell me in the comments, um, have you tried any of my um, little learner science units? If you have, which one has which one has been your favorite so far? And which one are you, or you could even put like, which one are you most excited about um, one of the new releases coming up? So that way I kind of know what you guys are excited about. Um, so yeah, so this is a pet fish science unit if you're just joining us. And I have um, always loved having class pets because it builds classroom community. And it's a really great way for me to sneak in lots of science and it teaches um, how to do, um, I can teach all those observational skills too. Um, and how to examine things that are, you know, not like a shell or a rock, like uh, observe something that is alive and moving and grooving. So, yeah, so I've always had either, I used to have pet hermit crabs, but then in my state, we are no longer allowed to have them, so we switched to beta fish. Um, and in, in this unit, you will need a pet fish <laughs> in order to do this unit, and you can either choose um, a beta fish, which those are just the easiest to take care of, or I know a lot of teachers do goldfish, or you can do like tropical fish if you're very adventurous. Um, I'm, I'm not the best at keeping them alive, so I always go with the beta fish. Um, so I'm gonna flip the camera around and show it to you guys in action. Here we go. Okay, so before you even get the fish, um, we wanna teach about what a fish needs. So what better way to teach about what a fish needs than, oh, I have a class read aloud included and it's all about kind of what um what you'll need to um set up the aquarium and kind of what fish need and you can also oh goodness you can relate it to do fish need the same things that people need do all animals need the same things you know they need basically shelter food and air and fish need water so and my sunlight just shined in on me. <laughs> um, so basically, after you read that book, then you can have your kiddos help you and create this shopping list for your fish. So you're obviously going to need a fish and a plant and gravel and food. And you can also talk about what are these things do we have to have and what are these things are just fun to have. Like what, are they, what do fish need and what would be like fun, like what would they want? Well, they would probably want a rock, that way they could play and hide in, and they would probably want a plant. Do they need a plant? Nope, um, but it would be fun, and that was something that a fish would probably want. Um, and But do they need food? Yes, they need food. And I do have a water card, um, but usually when you go to the store, you don't buy water. You can actually buy beta water if you're really scared about having a pet fish. Sometimes I do, um, if, the, if my fish is starting to look a little sickly. Um, here it actually is. If you go to the pet store, you can actually buy beta water. Um, See, so there is a um, water card if you want to add it to your list. So after you would do the shopping list, you can have the kiddos make their own shopping list. And this is a pre-K friend, so he has aquarium and food and fish and a plant and gravel. And then here is a first graders um, um, shopping list. I actually, my sons are pre-K and a first grader, so they love trying out the units for me. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's what it would kind of look like um, if you did it with your pre-K class or you did it with your first grade class. And then I actually go to the store and I buy all the things. And I don't unbox anything at first. I actually just leave it. I bring in like literally the Petco bag or wherever you buy your pet stuff. And I leave it just like this. And then as a class, um, we set it up during circle time. And this one actually comes with a filter, but beta fish don't need a filter. Um, I actually got another tank because mine is cracking. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna have to replace it, um, which is why I got a new one. But yeah, so you just buy everything and then don't unbox it. As a class, open it up and then talk about how you need to wait um, usually a day or two for the water to kind of get to room temperature. Um, that way you're, um, it keeps your fish nice and healthy. 
So while you're doing that, they can still go to the science center, but they can design their own aquarium and they could put in it all the things that a fish would need or want. <laughs> oh, I know so many, but what does that want and need? I know it's kind of tricky, right? Because they think they have to have toys, <laughs> um, especially with um, Christmas around the corner. And then here you can also put, if you just have this set up in the science center, you can put either the beta fish so they can kind of look at the different ones or I have a goldfish poster or if you're getting tropical fish, you can put this tropical fish poster in. And then after you do the shopping list, I'm gonna flip you over here, sorry if I make you dizzy. I always let the kiddos vote on what color fish to want. So if you are doing a beta fish, or any, maybe you're doing a goldfish, you can bet, bet, <laughs> you can have them vote on what color. And so I have different color cards and the little fish. You can just copy on colored paper and you can do a graph, a great way to sneak in some math. And if you're doing a tropical fish, um, I did include some tropical fish cards. So you can make a graph with those. And I actually asked all the teachers in my group what um, fish they have for those of them who get tropical fish. And these are the ones um, they all said. So I included those. And then here are just the other color cards. And then I actually prepped um, other colors of fish cards um, just for if we're you know going to vote on something else. And then it's always fun to vote on a name and you're building that sense of classroom community. You're sneaking in some social studies because whatever the majority wants wins. Even if you don't want it, you gotta gotta roll with it. Um, and then you can also vote on a name. And for the name, I, we did tally marks. Um, and they came up with the name and then they um, voted on it. Actually, this one, um, my kiddos did the tally marks for me. Um, that way, um, you would kind of know what it looked like if, if um, your kiddos helped you. So you can do it during circle as a classroom, as a meeting or something. After you vote on the fish, then you can vote on the name. And you can do a bar graph and tallies. That way you can represent graphs in different kinds of ways. And then, once you get your fish, you are going to want to make fish rules. You, now, you can either make up your own or you can use the ones I have included. Um, quiet voice, observe with your eyes, calm body, draw your discoveries. And they don't always have to. I just put that on there as a little reminder that they can. And then share your observations and ideas with your friends. Um, and I always keep this on the table. Even if when we're done with a fish study, my pet fish moves right there on my, on my science shelf. I still keep these fish rules right next to him. <laughs> um, that way he um, stays safe. And it's just a great visual reminder of what, um, how to, what, how they need to act around him to keep him safe. And you can also talk about um, what would happen if you, um, what would happen if you had a loud voice. You know, what happened if you didn't have a calm body? Could it spill the tank or whatever, um, and things like that. And then I just have a nice cue card. They can use the magnifying glass to look at the fish closer. And I have my magnifying glass. And then behind it, I have, again, the real life vocabulary cards. And there is a book list, so that way if you want to buy more books for your fish, I think I have like three on there that I love. And then um, I have these observation challenges. So this one, this science table, I'm going to scoot back a little bit, sorry guys. I have this fish observation kind of challenge set up to observe the parts of a fish. And then I have this parts of a fish chart and here's um an observation my pre-k kiddo did he said flippy flapper has fins and then my first grader wrote flippy flapper has gills so he can breathe um so you can see the different levels but that way you can um, use it for whatever and if you have a three-year-old friends they're probably just going to scribble or just make a big blob for a fish and that's okay it's just those very very beginning stages of inquiry and observation so that keep go ahead and put out those observation pages um, with your kiddos and and do those observations with them too. Don't um, feel them left out. And I know you're thinking like, how on earth am I supposed to have? Because when I had 18 kiddos, we did small group. We did the observation challenges, and I put the fish in the middle of like I would put him in the middle of our circle area, and then all the kids would lay on their bellies around the fish. He would lay, they would all lay around their bellies all the way around the fish and that way they could all observe and we just had a rule that they had to have their hands um, under their chin or by their sides um, while they're observing him. And there is a fish in here. He just loves to hide. You see him? 
<laughs> um, so yeah, probably because I'm moving the table, probably freaked him out. Um, but yeah, so he is in there. But that way you can either do the observation challenges um, for small group and just have the kiddos lay around it and observe and then do their um, journal pages after or you can just have it set up in the Discovery Center. So it's kind of up to you. And then if you wanted to do a um, circle time on the parts of a fish, I did include the large um, anchor chart parts of a fish. And then there are student recording pages as well. Here is my first graders label the fish. And then my pre-K friend wanted to do it too. He's actually loving these label pages, but he only did, he only did, he instead of writing all the letters, he just wrote the, that first letter. Um, so he loves actually doing these, which I am like pumped about. My little guy is so excited about science this year. I had um, another teacher tell me that there, um, since the, she's been putting the science units, um, the Little Learner Science Units in her science center, it's actually become one of the most popular science, um, most one of the most popular centers in her class. And that just makes um, my heart so happy because we need kiddos excited about science. Um, and then there's more observation challenges so you can observe the par parts of an aquarium. Um, so I would probably do this one first um, when you get it and then do the parts of a fish second. And then you can do like how he moves. And I tried to add a picture cue on here laminated sorry that way they could kind of see what the challenge is that week and then you could do observe how he eats so you could feed him um, during small group um, or while the kiddos are over there and the kiddos can watch how the fish eats and then if you have tropical fish or goldfish you can talk about how they interact um, that because that's that would be another fun way to observe and by doing these observation challenges they're not just going to the science center and just looking at the fish like they have a purpose for looking at the fish and I know it sounds silly, like, oh, a, a, a preschooler doesn't need to do that or a kindergarten doesn't, doesn't need to do that. But if they have a purpose, they're going to look closely more at certain things and they're going to really tune in to different, to different things. And they're going to learn more because they have a focus. Um, and then there's journals. Um, just like all the other science centers, there's journals and they have a one-line page, a two-line page, and then there's a dotted line page. And then there is a parent note you can send home. And then I also have, um, since we you guys are talking about the characteristics with the kiddos, how they have gills and fins, um, I have this fun sorting activity. So you can do fish and then not a fish. And I just have these on Velcro dots. So you can just take them all off and then they can sort them. And then if you want to make it really interactive and hands-on, you, you can use the cards in this fish not a fish mat and just pull out some little animals just from like your block area or the dollhouse and they can sort these and you can be like well how do you know is it a fish is does he have a tail yep but does he have fins no um or does he have gills so it's just a fun way to do fish not a fish and exploring the characteristics of a fish and again a recording page and then at the end of the unit you can do one of these fun can have our anchor charts to kind of um, check in on all of the things that they've learned. So if you go to the top of this post, you can grab all of these things and you can have a pet fish science study in your classroom. Oh, and then organization. So I, I'm not a binder girl, but if you are a binder girl, you can put all this in a binder. And then I just put it on page protectors in a book ring. And then there's lots of in-action photos in the classroom. Um, and I just put the recording pages behind it. Like there's the fish for the fish graph. And I just put the extra ones behind it. That way if I need to make copies, they're right there. And then I slide everything in one of these iris tubs, which you can get at Michael's. Or you can use whatever storage system you like. And then I just plop everything in here when we're done. Um, and then if you have a small science center, you can always print out everything smaller. I know some of us have small classrooms. So instead of printing the book out full page, you can print it out half page. That way if you have a, like a table half this size, that way it'll fit on there better. And they'll still have room to write and draw. And there are directions on how to do that included. So all right friends, so this is the pet fish science unit. Go to the top of this post to grab it. You guys have a fabulous day. If you have any questions, just reach out to me and I will help you with that. And you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you soon.